Okay, so um, I told you I would show you an example problem, and in, in this case, I'm going to show you an example problem from last year's final exam. So, you know, it won't be on your final, but it's a good example of the kinds of problems that I might uh, look for. Okay, so let's just get going. Here's the problem. Um, so I have two cars. Uh, on a frictionless plane connected by uh, a spring. And I think, let me see, hold on one second. Spring constant A, compressive distance S, and one, this is a mass M, and this is 3M, and this has a spring constant K, and this is compressive distance S. But that's not the distance, that's how much the spring is compressed. And so the question is, um, I'm holding these two carts together when I let them go, uh, how fast were each of them going? So again, the thing you should think of every time is not just whatever you're given, but what, what's the basic principle here? Um, is this momentum principle? Is this work energy? Is this um, angular momentum principle? It's really one of those three, essentially, right? Um, so, or maybe it's a combination. In this case, you could rule out angular momentum. Right? There's nothing that's rotating. There's no angular momentum involved. Um, so, but let's look at both work energy and the momentum principle. The momentum principle says F net equals dP dt. And I'm going to take both the carts and the spring as my system. Then I have gravity pulling down on them and the floor is pushing up. But those, those add up to zero vector. So uh, F net is going to be zero for the system. So this means that the change in momentum for the system is zero, or that the momentum is constant. So I can say P initial equals P final. And if I call this the X, Y direction, then really I can say the initial momentum in the X direction is the initial momentum in the Y direction. Now, initially, there's no momentum, they're at rest. So let me call this, let me draw this little picture after there. Let's call this V1. Maybe that's a poor choice, but oh well. That's 3M. We'll call that V2. Okay. So in the x direction before the collision, the uh, PX initial equals 0 equals PX final. And I can write that in the x direction as minus mv1 plus 3mv2. So that's just your conservation momentum expression. Now you should write something down like that and, and don't quit because you can say, oh, well, fine, the mass is cancel, and I get an expression with v1 and v2, but I can't, I can't solve for that equation. Okay, I can't because I have two variables I don't know, v1 and v2. Usually when you get an expression with two variables and you only have one equation, the best thing is to find another equation with both of those variables in there. And then I can, I can have two equations to unknowns that I can't solve. So for this case, um, I can use the work energy system, I mean the work energy principle. So work is a change in energy. I'm going to include all of that as my system. So there's no work done on it. The floor pushes on it, but that's perpendicular to the way it moves, so it doesn't do any work. And same for gravity. So I can write this as 0 equals delta K1 plus delta K2 plus delta U spring. Because I can have kinetic energy for this, kinetic energy for that, and energy stored in the spring. And here 1 and 2 are uh, the objects, the mass 1 and mass 2. So initially, there's no kinetic energy, but there is spring potential energy. And at the end, there's kinetic energy, but not spring potential energy. So let's just write this down. Zero equals the final kinetic energy is going to be one half for object one, V1 squared, minus zero, right, because it started at rest, plus one half three M V2 squared, minus zero. I won't put that in there. I don't want that to be 13. Uh, and then the final spring potential energy is zero minus the initial 
one half k s squared. That's the amount of energy stored in a compressed spring. Okay, so let's just uh, simplify this. I'm going to move the one half k s squared to the other side. I don't even know why, but I'm just going to. And I'm going to multiply all, everything by two. So I get m v one squared plus three m v two squared equals k s squared. Okay, so now I have two equations, two unknowns. I have that equation, k and s are, are values that were given. Okay, so we don't, they're not really variables, and we're not trying to solve them. Let me just solve this one, uh, say uh, v1 equals 3v2. All right, if I add mv1 to both sides and divide both sides by m, I get, I get that. Let me put that in over here, and I get, um, let me divide both sides by m. So now v1 squared, I get 9v2 squared plus 3v2 squared equals k s squared over m. So this is 12v2 squared equals k s squared over m. So I can divide both sides by 12 and take the square root and I get v2 equals the square root of k s squared over 12 m. k s squared over 12 m. And if you check the units, it does have the right units. Okay. And, and that's the answer. There's no numbers. I know that makes some people uncomfortable, but that's the answer for one of the masses. And then the other mass has, is going to have a velocity. Actually, this is the magnitude of the velocity. We know it's moving in the negative direction. Uh, V1 is just going to be three times that. So three times square root of k s squared over 12 m. I could bring this in as a 9, if that makes you happy. And you could reduce that if it really makes you happy as 3 fourths. So it'd be the square root when you bring out the 2. I mean, I don't think this matters. I'd accept any form. It, I could bring out the 2 and the s. I get s over 2, square root of 3k over m. That looks kind of cooler, right? OK. So um, something else we could check. Which mass should be going faster? Um, well, if momentum is conserved, then mass m should be going faster. So does this have a larger value? Well, look, here I have essentially 3 fourths versus 1 twelfth. So yes, this one will have a larger uh, speed. Okay, is that okay? Any questions? Ha, that was a joke.